Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet an artist, uh, a painter, that actually used to live here in Madison. Uh, I've been following them for a while, and their work is just, uh, I, I really like the boldness of it, the the shapes and the, uh, we, we actually talk about, I, I don't want to spoil it because we actually talk about how the work came about and what it actually represents or what it's based on. Uh, but, uh, they, they recently pay, uh, posted a painting on Instagram and I was like, oh yeah, it's another one of those ones where it's like, I meant to talk to this person. And when their work pops up, I always go, oh yeah, let me contact them. So I did, we got together and talked about what they're doing. So right now, uh, we, are talking on the show. I don't know where I was going with that sentence, but now <laughs> here's the show. My name is Araceli Zuniga. Um, I am a multidisciplinary artist, although I focus on painting. Um, so I guess I'm a, I'm a painter at heart. That's mainly what I do. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I could talk about my occupations, but I don't know if that's like... Like what art. you do aside from painting? Yeah, or? yeah. Because So right now I, I'm a operations uh, manager at a gallery that I work for. What gallery? Um, Fluxed. So it's F-L-X-S-T, um, Contemporary. It's a gallery on South Michigan Ave in Chicago. Okay, is that and, where you're located right now? Or you're in Chicago? Yeah, I'm in Chicago right now. Okay. In Chicago. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, so I worked there and then uh, that's sort of kind of a, that was a new upgrade. And then. Uh, yeah. Like how recently worked. did you just start there or, or have you been there a while? Yeah. Well, almost, I've been working there for almost a year now. Um, and I started out just as a gallery um, assistant and then now I'm a operations manager, which is crazy. What, <laughs> yeah. What does that entail? I don't even know what that means. It sounds important, right. but I don't know what that means. I know. Right. It sounds totally, <laughs> I know. Right. I'm like, hold on. Um, so I basically uh, manage art handling. So like if there's, if we have a show coming up, I mean, I do, I wear many hats essentially. Um, I'm the director's like second hand guy, but um, I do art handling. I talk with curators, um, collectors. Um, I also ship the work. I do emails. I talk with the artists. Um, I also sometimes curate shows um a bunch of stuff just like a lot of that and then upkeeping the gallery so like spackling the walls really the walls. <laughs> come on you know you really well, i suppose i mean i guess that would be part of upkeep actually you said so you said you shipped the work um now does it is it just paintings like are you shipping sculptures are you shipping like a multitude of things mostly paintings and sculptures and i've done photography too so okay mostly 2d stuff 2d stuff um all right but yeah so now i feel like i'm really actually because I, I graduated in this past may so almost oh a year ago, nice not, yeah uh from the school of the art institute school of the art institute of chicago um and so i feel like i'm kind of really using that degree a little bit like yeah. <laughs> i got a gallery job right after like i feel so you know right nice. You weren't just some some random person off the street and they gave you a job. You worked for it, you know? Yeah, I get it. Some Show off. Smoke. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that that's exciting. Yeah, you know, to have that title, I think. But um, especially after graduating, it's so daunting. Yeah. Post-graduating, like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And everyone that gradu after graduating – um college goes through that there's like this weird lull period of like i don't even know you know if things aren't sort of figured out right away yeah. but um yeah so i'm grateful for that okay yeah. now yeah. speaking of going to school i mean how did you get started as an artist like what what did you start out as it's always interesting to see the origin stories of like you know now you you said you're painting but did you instantly when you uh began with art start making yeah. paintings or were you drawing, you know, were you drawing anime characters? I mean, like, it, it, actually that's, a, that's an answer I get a lot when I ask people about that. They really? started out drawing anime. Yeah. Um, but it's accessible. It's really accessible. And you know, it's funny is that when that you say that is that um, I started out in illustration. So okay, I guess when I was four, I started drawing. So that was kind of like where really the origins of it. But yeah, yeah. I was uh, mainly interested in drawing and, illustration-esque work so like 
Yeah, like characters. what style of illustration? Uh, what would what would be some of the influence as far as the illustration? Because that could be a number of things too. Like, I mean, there's there's yeah, hand drawn illustration, there's graphic design yeah. illustration. Like, mm -hmm. what what was what was your so, forte? Yes. Yeah, so I guess like middle school to high school, and then I mean college is sort of when I got into graphic design or. Um, literally like digital illustration. But in high school, um, I would work, and before that I'd work just with literally just pencil. Like I was pretty just stuck on drawing. Like I really love drawing. Um, because you can you can erase, which is like amazing. I mean, uh, cause I, that's Well, I mean, there's a the control Z in graphic design too. I mean, you have unlimited, you can erase entire layers without having to do anything. <laughs> that's true, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> That's like godly. I, yeah. I feel like that's way like to me. It, hand drawing is like ten times more difficult these days. Right, <laughs> completely. I know, right? The traditional. I know it definitely is, and it's. Um, so this was before I knew you could even do digital drawing. I was so I don't know. I guess I was kind of also my high school didn't have a great art department, but um, most don't. So, yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah. So drawing, I would draw honestly, like. I did a lot of like world building. Like I sort of just imagined oh, really? things. Yeah. Like I really enjoyed creating like characters or just like, um, I really love storytelling um, and having a narrative. So like I would draw the same figure or character for maybe a few weeks, months, and then I would sort of move on. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how I started. I really like, so I paint, um, I have cats. Sorry. Hold on. I right. paint. Uh, figurative work is mainly what I is what I focus on. And that's what I've been doing since forever. Like, I just love people um, and humans and just like it's sort of it's a, it's popular. It's been popular in like contemporary in the contemporary world forever now. Like people love figurative work because there's like abstract work. Right. But right. People, we can just really obviously it's like a reflection of ourselves so um yeah i started out with like character building or just world building and then having these characters and then motifs like just doing like similar things like sticking with it for a little while okay yeah and then when i went to i went to uw milwaukee peck school of the arts for a year All right um and that's when i started to learn how to do graphic like i use illustrator like from adobe illustrator mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's when I got into that, which was great. Cause I'm like, wow, you can just control Z or whatever. Right. You, know, you just go back. Well, and just like, bending things and you can switch them after the fact. And yeah, yeah. of course, add things on top yeah. of it. Although I suppose you can with painting too, but still not after the fact. Well, right. Completely. It's sort of a hard quicker, to explain. Yeah. <laughs> depends. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. Um, but yeah, that's when I got into to digital work. Um, but I love illustration. I love illustration. Okay. I love when people would say they start an anime too, because it's like, it's easy, it's accessible. It's like, it's, you know, that's why people love it. So like, yeah, I have cartoons too. I love cartoons and things like that. Well, and the fact that in Nata, I mean, just because my mind for some reason is waxed into anime philosophical, but I mean, they also, <laughs> with anime, it had a style, it had a design, it looked complex but at the same time, anime also really made use of uh, minimal design creating, yeah. you know, form and motion. Like it, The fact that like yeah, fight scenes right. all start out with somebody just going like this and the background's just repeating. Doo -doo 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 -doo, yeah, which makes know? it look like they're moving. Right, and it's really yeah. just like that's five minutes of just a, a, a thing repeating in the background. It's like a gif or, or a jeff or whatever you pronounce yeah, it as. Right. But, you know... <laughs> Yeah, and and that's the thing too is it's it see it people want to emulate that and once you figure out it's like oh that's super easy and then it, yeah it's yeah it, it completely I completely I've, I mean I've, when I've, you 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 are still you're in illustration I mean you make yeah comics. yeah yeah. I, yeah. It, yeah. and, and that's my and me I'm more of the uh, I, I'm also in the minimal minimalistic style but mine is more like the the old school Hanna Barbera style where it's like. You know, make it look cartoony, but also see like how many few drawings can I make, but make it look like, oh, this is it's doing something, Something's you happening. know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and right. there are little exactly. tricks that really work and it's amazing. And I've I've used them in cartoons that I've done. And so I've used that uh, minimalistic style and just like, you know, you draw a shape like it. One of the things is like uh, there there's a method where it goes draw a car. 
like just spend as much time as you can drawing a car. Okay, now spend 10 minutes drawing a car. Okay, now spend five minutes. Now spend 30 seconds. And you see like what's really important to still get the uh, figure and emotion, or not yeah, emotion, yeah. but like the likeness of a car. So it's like, oh, that's really all it takes as far as cartooning yeah. goes. And, and I love that. <laughs> and also it's yeah, good I mean, for I'm me. Sure, I know, right? Well, I'm sure you're familiar with that one. Like the there's this thing that Picasso did where he drew the, the bull and mm. then he gave himself less time and it was just like it just went down to like four lines of what a bowl would be. Oh, yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, and it, it's a really cool progression. But um, yeah, totally. I, I think that's so fun. Like three, just a couple things and it. You suggest this movement or whatever. And, it, and our brains are like, yep, got it. Like that makes sense, you know? So, right. The funny um, thing is, is when I try to do it on purpose, it's garbage. I don't like if I try not to do it, it's like, oh, there we go. That's right. OK, it's not right, that hard. Right, right. And then I when know, I do yeah. go, OK, do it really fast. It's like, well, that line's horrible. I know. You oh. can't think about too hard. Yeah. <laughs> how, so how would you explain your work? So we've talked about like how you went into graphic design um, mm -hmm. and you really liked it. But you also, when we started out, said that you're mainly doing painting, which is yeah. the work you do is very uh, it does it does emulate kind of the vector feel because you have more shapes and yeah, uh, very, objects in different yeah. colors layered on top of each other. But how would you describe your work? Yeah. Um, honestly, right now I would describe it as it's sort of like drawing with painting. Like that's, I think where I, I think I had this sort of moment in school, my last year at school where I was like, Oh yeah, I, I made this painting and, my instructor was like, that's gorgeous. That's amazing. And it wasn't even done. I was like, this is not finished painting. But it's because what she really admired was that I was drawing with painting. So like, and since I've been drawing my whole life, like I do have a good drawing hand. Um, and so I thought, I, I think that I, I, I honed in on that a little more. And um, yeah, I think they're, they're sort of, and they're ambiguous. I really like um, ambiguity, like within the figures, because I want anyone to be able to relate to them because right now I think there's this, and I really like it. I really like what we're in, what, what we're like experiencing right now in terms of like what's um, uh, in the art world, but um, this like hyper specificity of identity, it's like really huge. I'm just seeing a lot of that in painting and I love it. But I think for me, I really just love having the figures be ambiguous, like, and sort of there's not much of like a gender either. It's sort okay. of just people. It's just people. And um, the idea of like what a person is. And um, and yeah, color's a big thing too. I love color. Uh, so that I'm just looking at a painting right now as we're because I have one hung up on the wall. Is there a but, particular um, color that you gravitate towards or that you use as a main theme or is it just a yeah. different color each time? There is. Okay. I thought yeah, so, have, but I didn't want to assume. I know, which I've noticed. It's not, I don't even do it on purpose. It just happens. But um, pinks, blues, and greens, like yeah. on, on the lighter side. Um, I do like what red. I'm in, I'm in a red phase. I was in a red phase. That's why I asked, because I noticed some of your more recent ones have, have red in them. And red. I didn't know if yeah. you were doing, and we had discussed Picasso before. So I wasn't sure if you were going through, you right, were testing out different periods. Period. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, completely. <laughs> I definitely had a red period. That was over the summer. Okay. Um, yeah. And then uh, now I'm, I'm sort of back in this, like, they're uh, playful, col they're playful colors. Um, and that, that too is, I, my work's very childlike, I'd like to say. Like, it's this is playful expression. Yeah. Um, and with just in color and how I even paint. Um, and I use modeling paste to create a lot of texture, too. And so... How's Even that? just the surface is, yeah, the surface is sort of um, interesting as well. Uh, but yeah, I just mix it with the paint. Like I just sort of, I have acrylic and I get modeling paste and I just mix them together and I literally paint like a child. Like it's like, I just go for it. Like that's why it feels so. Okay. Well, like, what made you think to use that? Is that a technique that's known or is that like, how did you come about that technique? Yeah, so actually, um, I had a, a peer of mine who was explaining how she made her surfaces. Um, her name's Ella, um, and she said she uses modeling paste. Her surfaces are way different than mine. Like, they're just, they're thick. They're thick. Because modeling okay. paste is like a thick acrylic, basically. Um, so it gives it this, like, viscosity. There's this, um, yeah, viscosity and body to it. And um, I was like, what is, I want to be curious. So I bought a gallon of it. 
All right. And I just started using it. And yeah, I mix it with the paint. It's it's very it's just it's super thick, so you can just see where I'm brushing, which yeah. I think is fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's how I use. Yeah, yeah. So um, a lot of moving parts, but yeah, basically I love like. Like this childlike expression of people and, and intimacy and relationships. Like right now, I'm really in this moment of. I started with childhood being like the the root of my work, which it still kind of is, but it's sort of expanded now into relationships and intimacy and closeness and like vulnerability. Um, those that's like the bigger idea that I'm really interested in. Um, but yeah, that's that's sort of. That's like what my work is about, essentially. Okay. And then it fluctuates. Like right now, I'm really into uh, luchadores, which are. Mexican I was wondering because I was I was noticing the masks, and then some of them even had like a symbol on the head, and I wasn't sure if that's what it was supposed to be, or also it's still the shapeless yeah. figure. So I wasn't sure if that's right. what it was leaning towards. Okay. Yeah. So now there's a exactly there's more of this like there is some specificity now with like my figures and and because I thought. Um, you know, they're, they're already, it seems like they're wearing these body suits mm -hmm. and I'm like, what if I just made them a little more human and like, you know, there's cutouts now. So there's like, oh, there's a person underneath that. Um, and I just, well, love, and also like, with a lot of the grappling, that's why I got that too, is because you'll, but they're not necessarily grappling, grappling as if they're wrestling or anything. Uh, yeah. Right. right. Yeah, okay. Is, yeah. So right now, yeah. The one I just posted, the one I just made. Um, the painting I made, yeah, they're still like kind of childlike. They're not like buff men, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, but they sort of have the the similar similarities of like luchadores, which like the the suits. Um, and again, they're still like kind of ambiguous. Like you can't really define what you're seeing, which I like because it leaves room for people to 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 make their own conclusions. Um, but. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually working on two big ones, right? Two big paintings right now, which are a little even more specific to luchadores. But um, yeah, it's just, it, it, I was, because I, I sort of went through a period in the summer where I didn't know what to make. I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm sort of, uh, I, I had no ideas. And that happens. And I was just living life, working, paying bills. <laughs> and then um, I, I needed money. So I, I asked folks on my Instagram, like, if you want a drawing, hit me up. This is how much it is. And I'll uh, mail it to you. And a lot of people actually reached out, which I'm so grateful for. Um, but that's when I started to draw the luchadores, like, a lot more. When I really paid attention to it, because I'm really in this, like, luchadores, I'm, like, really in it right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I made all these drawings. And then I was like, let me just start painting them. Like, let me just, like, actually really get into it. Because that's why I, I start with drawing. Before I paint, I typically start with a drawing, mm -hmm. um, loose, nothing too crazy. And so now I'm that's then I made the painting of the the one I recently made. Um, that was like the first one of like, okay, these are luchadores. That is where I'm where I'm heading right now. So that's sort of the direction I'm in, and um, I'm really enjoying it. It's fun. It's okay. exciting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you so. were talking about the process of starting it. So like what, I guess, what is the process? I mean, that's, that's something that always, yeah. I mean, there's a different answer for everybody, but when you create a project, it starts from somewhere and sometimes it's going to be a gigantic thing. Sometimes it's a small thing. Sometimes it's a illustrated thing, hand-drawn. Completely. Yeah. So uh, what would you say is uh, if you had to summarize kind of like the process of how you start a project? I mean, you, you kind of started with saying you'll do a drawing first to kind of right. think about so it. Right. So I'll do, yes. So typically, you know, if I were to really make like speed line this process, it would be that I would research something that interests me it has to excite me that's the thing i think with any artist like if it's not exciting you it's going to be hard to like work with it um an idea and i've been sitting on this luchador one for at least six months before it really came into fruition um and so the right time kind of hit i mean it, i it started out with the drawings um that is pretty consistent throughout like whenever I do have a project. I, Were you using any uh, any particular sort of like wrestler or anything in, as a reference or like pictures yeah. or time periods of the, the type so of? So I, 
yeah i was i was using um for the drawings that i did just, that i sent out um i was using specific images of certain luchadores like okay. there's one um i did like yeah like i researched images of luchadores from the um like i think 80s and 90s nice. um and there's like el santo mil mascaras um there's a few of them um those two are like really popular and um i mean the images are just great they're so dynamic yeah. that's why i really enjoyed them but um so i make the drawing and um then i everything else color um colors made up on the spot i don't think about color that much that's the kind of thing when we were talking about the drawing like you, like if you think about it, if you try too hard it's sort of just like yeah you know um sometimes it can get lost right but color i i just wing it and then I know there's going to be changes with um, even the figures. I'm like, this is a loose idea. I Because what also is exciting about it is that I learned in school is, I mean, there's, for me, what works for me is that I don't plan too far ahead because I want the painting to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of an exciting, it's like a back and forth, it feels like. Because then I'm surprised with the painting. I'm like, oh, this is what would look better, actually. Or, this is what would work. And those moments are really exciting. But um, yeah, so then I, I, I paint it, use the modeling paste. Uh, and then, you know, there's, I look, there's a lot of looking. There's so much time that's spent just looking at it. And that's part of the process. Like I used to hate it because I'm like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just, it seemed kind of passive. Okay. But it's so integral to the process of a good painting. Like, so this one that I've, finished recently i mean it took me a couple months like which is a slow that's pretty slow for painting i mean for some people i guess i don't know because in school they try to i mean you're just pumping out paintings so like now okay. that i'm taking all this time yeah um it feels a lot slower but so looking i'm looking and then i make it's a lot of problem solving that's the process um so within while i'm looking i'm figuring out okay that doesn't look good that doesn't look good then I sort of sit with it and I'm like, what would look good? Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes there have been times where I use Photoshop to put something in the painting without committing. Okay. Yeah. Seeing if it works and then yeah. whatever. That's a really, that's a good tool to use. How, like you would take a photo of the painting, import it, and then do something to it in Photoshop. Yes. Like okay. draw. That makes sense. It. I get that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's actually not a bad idea. I mean, it's it's, it's not a, a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's so simple. It's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, I know. It's a, it's like I have this tool. Let me use it. It's like, uh -huh. you know, and, and it really uh, takes little to no effort to just import a photograph into it. Yeah, I don't have to paint on the damn thing and, and then regret it. You yeah, know? it's like I like that. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah. So that's fun. I do like. I've done that a couple times, and then I do the problem solving, which just resolve the whatever issue i had and then um yeah and then knowing when a painting's done is is sort of i think really particular to each person but i think for me it's when there's just nothing it just there's a it's a feeling i don't know, it just feels right i guess uh there's the there's a flow to it compositionally everything's good it's almost like a check like i check everything off i'm like there's nothing else that's bugging me mm -hmm. there's something that's bugging me it's not done yet um, <laughs> okay yeah i just like the way you said it. if there's something that's bugging me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah that and then ta-da and then okay. that's it that's sort of so you don't have the syndrome that like can happen or it, it sounds like you you know when uh to end a lot of the problems and i have this problem as well is there's the there's the there's a reason there's a term you have to take the brush out of your hand eventually you know to stop right. you know which is right. just like keep working on it and all of a sudden it's like you went too far um, yeah right overworking yeah. something that is something i've struggled with actually okay yeah um it sounds and, like, well, at least it sounds like part of your process. You're involving like, okay, and then you know when it's done as long as this isn't bugging you. Yeah. So. Yeah, right. As long as there's not something I'm like, that looks weird. Yeah. And if there's none of that, we're good. I think we're in the clear. But um, yeah, I guess I, ha I used in school, there were moments where it's confidence. I mean, you, you can tell when there's confidence in a piece, I think, um, and when someone isn't sure of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think 
like I'm still figuring that out and I think in school that's when I learned like just being around my peers too like it's you have to be sure of yourself in the decisions you make for the painting um or the piece whatever you're working on yeah and so um yeah I think yeah because I also a big thing too that this is like a weird tip but okay. or something that I was told people tend to overwork like right in the middle a lot of a painting, obviously like that's, that's like where someone maybe you can tell where someone's really like just too much, like where people could tend to overwork it okay. rather than like the corners, which makes a lot of sense. I think, cause we sort of like, ah, oh, corners, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so I try to keep that in mind too, as I'm like, I'm like, Oh, and there's also people like turn their work upside down. That's a big thing Oh yeah. to see yeah. you see and you notice different things. Um, I don't do that quite as much, but that is something else that um, I've heard people do. I've done that but when yeah. I try to do actual figure drawing, not cartoon figure drawing, and I'll turn yeah, it upside right. down and I'm like, oh, this body is not in the proportion. Yeah. yeah, it's like, wait, that leg is like, you know, about well, two weird. feet longer than it should be. Yeah, it's it really, it really does make a difference. Like turn it, it right side up and it's like, that seems perfectly normal, but just all Exactly. The, huh, yeah, I've done that a few times, but also I don't do as much actual figure drawing anymore. Now everything, it's like, it's okay if the arm is, you know, just the, outstretched know, right? like yeah. yeah yeah it's it's supposed to be that's a feature not a bug <laughs> <laughs> that's a feature not a bug <laughs> but that's intentional <laughs> uh, yeah. that the current painting that you have how how large is this painting like how what scale are you normally painting in so i um uh, mainly i like to paint big okay the one i just finished is on the smaller side i think it's like 28 by 36. The, the smaller uh, side. Get out of here, really? Are, are you saying feet or inches? Inches, inches. Okay, jeez. Yeah. Is that <laughs> I don't know. You have tall ceilings from what I'm seeing I in the video there, it's so I don't tall. know. Tyler, we have big ceilings, yeah. <laughs> I can go tall. I don't know if you have um, a warehouse studio somewhere where you're yeah. doing this stuff. <laughs> Eventually, that'd be nice. I paint. I still just paint in my apartment, which okay. is a hassle, but we make it work. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're, they're on the bigger side okay um uh, like i love i mean uh four by five feet maybe okay. like that's like a nice size um it's still or, pretty good size yeah it's a yeah it's big yeah um but painting small kind of taught me a lot too um you just the, yeah the, it's just a different way of painting right i'm not doing this mm -hmm. right i'm like doing this which is like it informs it tells you it teaches you a lot i think so but yeah, that's this. I do enjoy like a bigger painting because um, it. I feel like there's more of a way you could relate yourself to the work, especially because they're figures. So it's like, oh, this is a life-size person, if not bigger, a little mm -hmm. bigger. So it sort of it makes you feel interesting, like your body relating to the painting. Um, I do like that effect. Okay. So. Well, yeah. This this brings up another question that I thought of too. Now that you've said that you do most of this work in your in your place um, and with them being larger sized, what do you do with them when you're done? Uh, how yeah. are you storing these things? What, yeah. Like what's, I mean, what's the plan for like how you uh, catalog and keep these paintings and, Completely. and are you selling them on top of that? Uh, you know, so what's yeah. what I just asked you three questions. I suppose I'll Either, just wait for the answers. <laughs> <laughs> so storing them. Yeah. So, it's funny, I, I the paintings, the big ones I just started, a great way to, to make big work without having to to like spend a lot of the mo all the money on stretcher bars, which I could learn how to make, which would be cheaper, but I don't like woodworking. But <laughs> I, okay. I paint I paint on the floor, like I, they're unstretched. Oh, all right. And so I can roll them up, um, which makes moving them around a lot easier. Uh. Um, you can kind of see in my background, they're in my room, the big paintings. They're okay. Just, in the corner there, I see him. I just pointed at him with my mouse. Like anybody's yeah. going to see that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my stepdad does that, which is funny. But, and then I have two in my closet on their sides. Cause those are big. Those are like four by five feet. Um, so they're just in my room, <laughs> you know, I once, and if I keep making, I'm going to have to eventually have a place to put them because like, I have a lot of work. I mean, event, you know starts building up uh and then you asked if i if i'm selling i think that was the next question yeah yeah i am they are 
uh, for sale. Okay. <laughs> it's hard because they're big. And I know that's it's harder to sell big work because it's like, where can you fit it in your house? You know, that's typically right. collectors are like, we don't have a ton of wall space. Mm -hmm. But um, that's something I'm trying to really actually consider is not painting huge all the time because for them to be acquired, it's like a little more work. Um, but I love big. I just love painting big. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they are um, definitely for sale. And uh, um, well, how, yeah. how are you selling them? Uh, how do you go about doing that? So right now I'm sort of represented by oh okay Flux. yeah i'm sorry say yeah. the name again i, I, I we spoke over each Flux. other when you said that and i want to make sure that yeah. they get it uh, the promotion right, in there right. so so i'm represented i'm basically represented by flux gallery with okay. or contemporary which is a gallery i work at um and so the way that works is that you would acquire it through the gallery and then they would figure out we figure out shipping and like how to get it to you um all that stuff and so that's kind of how it works if you're not represented like certain works i could just like uh the rent paintings some of them were acquired by people that i just know and they're like hey can i get this and i'm like yeah let's do it and so then right so you, you still know, do have the freedom to be able to just make the decision yourself i i guess yeah. i never knew when you're represented i didn't know how much that entailed completely okay so yeah it's sort of like some pieces it depends it's a conversation you have with like the gallery director or the gallery owner it's like yeah which works are under the con under a contract or which works will the gallery be um responsible for like selling and um so it's not all your work it doesn't have to be all your work so because the, the little i mean they're like little they're like 11 by 14 um i just kind of made those uh as like a side project and um yeah. So then people reach, sometimes people just reach out and they're like, Hey, can I get this? And so then, yeah, it's like super, it's like a chill thing. Like, yeah, like a trade. Almost, okay. You know, but, um, yeah. So there's both, right. It's like the gallery and then also myself, I can also just like sell work myself. Okay. Yeah. I, I was curious if you had a store set up <laughs> also does the, does flux have a store or is it mainly the people coming into the gallery? Yeah, they do. Um, they do actually have, well, they're on artsy too, but, um, okay. Typically, I think for the most part, you contact the gallery and like they on their website, you see like what work we have and then you contact them be like, I'm interested in this piece. And um, and then that's how it kind of it goes from there. But um, there is a store, too. I do have a drawing, I think, on there still. But okay. yeah, they also have a store. Yeah. All right. And yeah. <laughs> when did you start showing your work publicly? I mean, in the sense of like putting it out there under the guise of it being an art showing, not just like, right. Hey, I drew something, check this out. I, I mean, like actually mm -hmm. whether it be a market or uh, maybe some sort of gallery show, or was it yeah. just when you were doing it in school? I mean, was that the first time? When did you start doing that? Completely. Um, I started around, I think it was 2019. Okay. That's when I started doing, um, I was selling prints of my digital work. That's, at art fairs or art markets. Um, like I did, I did one at the Overture Center, um, the Latino Arts Fair, I think it was. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah like that's when I did. Um, but so that's where it started, where I really was like, yeah, I'm selling my work besides just like sharing what I'm making. Um, 2019, yeah, in Madison. So that's where it all right. started. And then I, I was showing, I have stuff at um, Prince too at um, uh, uh, Communication. Okay. So yeah, shout out Jenny. Um, and then from there, I returned to school, and um, which was SAIC. That's when I transferred to SAIC twenty twenty, right when COVID started, which was like, oh god, that was the whole thing. Um, so I wasn't selling anything. I wasn't like that's when I was really building a body of work. When I was like, okay, yeah, like what is it that I'm making? Because I'm kind of. I like to say multidisciplinary because I literally have done everything like sculpture, digital work, painting, graphic design, um, performance. I've done performance. Hmm. Um, but yeah. And, and because I, I started out with, with selling prints and I think that's still a really important part of my practice is like illustration. I think that's still very much there. So um, yeah. And now, now it's like, I have painting. So I'm, I'm like, 
yeah, this is what I'm making. This is what people can can acquire from me as paintings and drawings. I still draw. Love a good drawing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what are some of the things you learned over this period of putting your stuff out there? And uh, I mean, yeah, it's it feels so weird to ask. It's it doesn't seem that long ago, but I mean, you've clearly achieved a no. lot over this period of time. So, yeah. <laughs> what are some of the things you learned when you started doing this? Yeah. Oh, geez. Um, so much. I mean pricing that's still something i'm like learning is like how do you price your work because it's your worth it's it's labor it's your creative like your creativity yeah, do you have also. like a calculation or something or how <laughs> i guess that's a good question Not really no okay I mean, so there is it's sort of based off of what you have sold in the past like mm -hmm. once you have sold something that is what you can work off of right okay um and i've learned a lot too just working under um the gallery director flux jan um just learning a lot about like how do you um price work and so that's something i'm i'm still learning but i have a little more of a, a an understanding of it and um god what else um what people i mean how people approach you to get your work too i guess that's sort of something like i just love that like there is a sort of fluidity with like if I say I mean it, I could be a little more vocal with like oh this is what is I have up for like acquisition or just like things that I'm selling um because it's really nice that just like friends are like is there anything I could get like it's just sweet people are really really sweet of like wanting to get work for me and um and I try to make it really like accessible still that's a big thing I think even just like in all aspects of my practice accessibility is really important to me so okay like the little drawings like people that can't afford to get a huge ass painting in their room i'm sorry spore <laughs> that's um, okay <laughs> okay great <laughs> um they they can get a six by four drawing and it's like no problem and it's by me and it's like you know and i really love that like, i want to keep that in my practice is like i'm not just going to only make huge paintings that are x amount of money that you know is inaccessible like i want to make sure i'm still making things that everyone can get um well and, and even the prints that you spoke of is a way to hey i love this big painting but you could also make a print of it kind of and completely yeah so yeah. it's i mean it's a the, lot of i mean that's the reason the i mean like people in their dorm have Mona Lisa. I mean, you know, that's uh, yeah, on a poster. Completely. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's, it's exactly. what I'm getting at. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which I love. And you know, it's, it's, yeah. Like you go to the museum and you can get like a little, you can get a print of. Uh, right. Dollar that's what dollar. I was trying to think of. I, I was trying to think of a better way, but for some reason I went in a dorm and I'm like, when's the last time I was in a <laughs> dorm? It's been years. Hey, like I know place. anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a common place in the dorm, right? Yeah. That's where it starts. Um, yeah, completely. So that's something I, I I think I've learned too is to just keep things accessible. Um, yeah. I do love it. I just love it. And um, yeah, just honestly, and also just being like authentic with my like. It's not about like people getting the work, like or you know buying the work. It's obviously like I wouldn't be doing it if it. That, that's not a good reason to do something. I think, but like it doesn't yeah, hurt I, either, though. <laughs> does, does not hurt. <laughs> I mean, I mean that is there is there is a way to uh, ride the the common ground on it uh, because it there is, is it is good to be appreciated for the work you do, but at the same time, it, you don't want to just be pumping stuff out, going like we need to sell these hot dogs or whatever. Com you, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> completely. Yeah, I agree with you. There's there's always a balance, and I think like it is actually important to consider that because how you know, that's kind of how the world works right now. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just like also, that's something that it's, yeah, I don't want to, there was, there were moments where I'm like, I'm just making stuff. Like it's actually doesn't feel like it's really uh, true to what I want to make. Like yeah. I'm just make So that's something too. And then you can see it in the work. I mean, the, then it, I, at least I can, if you have an eye, like if there's a certain eye, I think artists have where it's like, ah, you know, maybe that, you know, I, I was rushing this or something, but, um, well, and the yeah. thing too, it, to elaborate on that, because I would say <laughs> my, <laughs> the stuff that I make, uh, musically and artistically yeah. are stuff that appeal to, uh, 1% of probably just me. You know, not 1% <laughs> of me, but like, I'm the 1% of people that are like, I make it for me. This is what I'm interested in. I know what the backstory is. 
And Absolutely. if people do see something and if they stick around long enough, they get it. But at first glance, it's like, it's very well, witty. Yeah. Especially with the fact that I do a diary comic. It's like you jump in in the it's middle so and it's perfect. like, what this, you know? What is it? <laughs> yeah. And then with the music I do, it's like an abstract of abstract music that I'm into, but you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, and it's all that kind of stuff, but it's the same yeah. thing. Like I know what I could do that would be really popular. I could do meme based comics. And I've tried doing them and I have, and they've been, people have liked them. And I'm like, yes. And the entire time I was drawing it, I was going, when am I going to be done drawing this? Is this finished? Like I was sick of doing it as I was doing it. No, completely right. Cause you're not being like true to your, to yourself. And like that, that makes, yeah, completely right. If you're thinking that it's like, that's a great sign that like, you know, there's, uh, it's not what you really want to be doing. And I think, yeah, that's true. I, um, I think that's great. And it's just, then the right people go to you though, you know, when you're just really doing what you do. Right. And that's kind of what I was getting at is like, if people get it or they see something in it, or like, maybe this is what I think it is because it's what they're looking for. There are people out there. Like I was looking for it. That's why I tried to create it. You were looking for what you were painting. That's why you created it. That's the reason we can is because we can create that. So somebody else must like it too. If I'm looking for it, I can't be the only one. There are entire corners of the internet based on like different weird things that people are into. And then when you discover it, you're like, holy crap, these people like this stuff too. It's not just me annoying my friends. <laughs> who don't get it. It's so gratifying. It's really yes. gratifying. I agree. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. And on that uh, case, uh, do you have anything that you're working on right now or projects coming up in the future or something that you'd like to tell us about? Yeah. So, um, okay. I have, I'm going to be in a group show at Flux April 7th. Um, that's coming up. It's like a sort of a, it's a, mini show of sorts um okay coinciding, yeah it's coinciding with a, a a solo show opening that we're having of um and to Don clarify Matthews. just because at an art gallery you never know when you say mini show it is you mean like it's not gonna be one of their bigger events it's not gonna be you walk in and it's a bunch of miniatures no right right so because it could right. be that i have seen that <laughs> so i just wanted to clarify happen. yeah yeah right it's mini work yeah okay. no so it's a it's a small, it's sort of like a pop-up show okay. that we're having, that we're having while there's a, a, a solo opening um, in this room that we built in the gallery. So it's kind of an intimate space. Um, it's mostly smaller work though. Not, it's not many, but smaller, definitely smaller. All right. But yeah, that's happening April 7th. And then um, I, um, I'm showing right now actually in Milwaukee. Um, I saw that. In- yeah, and a group show uh, um, uh, called In Limbo at Evil Twins Gallery. And then um, what else is upcoming? Oh, man. I mean, I'm working on some really exciting stuff. But it's sort of like still, you know, on the down low. Okay. Nothing, yeah. So that's about it right now, though. I'm just kind of working. Yeah. I'm good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And then if people what about wanted... you? What do you have going on? <laughs> it's, I'm just talking to you. <laughs> I got nothing. So, uh, yeah. but, uh, and if people wanted to see more of your stuff, where would you suggest they go do that? Um, so Instagram is the hot spot. Uh, my, um, what is it? My at is, this is not Araceli, which is, I, it is, but, um, <laughs> that's the name. And then, uh, yeah, that's typically where I post stuff and where I share things. I also have a website and it's called, uh, sleeplesstransgressor.com. Um, and yeah, that's where you can find most of like what I'm doing and stuff. So great. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Tom. You're so 